Hey y'all, welcome back to Adventuring with Amanda. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to my channel, welcome. So y'all, I've been doing some thinking. And we all know what happens when Amanda thinks. <laughs> uh, but I've been thinking since like October about getting a new van. About getting a bigger van. So in October, and I don't really know what it was about October that I started looking. I just started looking just to kind of see what's out there, right? Kind of get my feelers out there uh, because the car industry started to become more of a buyer's market in the fall after we kind of hit the peak earlier in the year where everything was super expensive. So prices started to drop in the fall. So I was like, you know, what? I'm going to start looking at vans. <laughs> So I got an RV trader because I do not want a Sprinter van. I don't want like a ProMaster or a Connect. I don't want anything like that. Um, I want, I, I've been interested in more of a Class B style, um, like Road Trek style, something like that. Like, you know, a small, a small Class B, nothing like the brand new ones. I don't want really that Sprinter style. So I started looking at older vans like around 2008 to 2010 because mechanically they're just way better than newer vehicles. Um, in recent years, especially the last decade, cars have just been like manufactured so quickly. They've become cheaply made. So I'm like, I want something older. I don't like how fancy vehicles have become. I like kind of the older like browns and the warm tones of the interior of the older vans. Um, you know, I don't want anything bougie because I'm just not a bougie person. Like all the RVs now, nowadays that are made, they're gorgeous, but it's just too fancy for me. It's just like not my style. So I got an RV trader and I started looking and I found a bunch of used class B vans in Arizona. Since I live in Arizona, I am in like the RV state, right? Of the country. I mean, this is the best place to buy a van, an RV, whatever. So I found a whole bunch of options on RV Trader. Um, but the vans that I was looking at, you know, even again, like 2008, nine that had, you know, around 50,000 miles on them. I've, I've been looking at vans anywhere from 30,000 to 80,000 miles. Um, like I said, like 2010 or older, um, they were around, you know, like $50,000. And I was like, uh, it's really pushing my budget, right? Like I, I, I was thinking I'd really like to kind of stay under that 40 mark, that $40,000 mark. Um, so I started looking and I found some vans that I absolutely fell in love with and I just decided to save them to my search, right? And the reason that I was thinking I want a class B van is because I can stand up in it and Winston has more space to move around. So I've been have I've kept my eye on this particular van that I just fell in love with and it's dropped from like $56,000 to $39,000. It's dropped a lot and it's still on the lot available for purchase and they are desperate to get rid of it and they are taking offers on it. So this month I really started to think about it and I'm like, you know what, maybe I want a bigger van. Like maybe I want to do this. You know, I really want to be more full time, um, but hold that thought because I have to see what my kid is barking at. Okay. He was barking at nothing. So this month I started to really think about it. I'm like, man, the van's still available. It's dropped so much money. I'm sure I could get it for a smoking deal at this point. Like, especially because I still have my red van that I can trade in and my silver van has equity in it at this point. So... I'm like, you know, starting to do some math and think about finances. And I'm like, man, I could stand up. I, I could have my mom camp with me. I could, you know, make an indoor potty for Winston. I could do all of these things. But then I really started to think about it. And I made some lists. And I was talking to those closest to me. I was talking to Maddie about it. Something that Maddie said, like, it was so simple, but it was so powerful. He was like, there's no point if you're going to have to take on more debt, right? Because I've paid off, like, so much of, like, most of my debt at this point that my expenses every month 
are so minimal. Like my monthly expenses are, it, I spend around $700 like on all of my bills and everything per month. So I can live off of like $1,200 a month. That's how limited my expenses are. So my first thought was, yeah, I would have to take on more debt. But even if it was a wash, right? Even if I traded in my vans and I got a smoking deal on this van, let's say I got it for like $30,000. And so I was making the same payment on the class B fuel because it's a V8. So way more in fuel costs automatically. Insurance, more expensive, okay? If anything breaks in that thing, expensive. I can't just like take it into, you know, a brakes plus or a discount tire or something and expect them to be able to fix a vehicle like that because it's not common. You know, it's a class B van. So you have all of that kind of overhead stress for a van like that. So I, so what I did was I made some pros and cons lists. So my, I did a class B pros and cons list. And then I did a minivan camper pros and cons list. Cause that's how I do. I write things down. You guys know me. I'm a writer by trade. So I write a bunch of lists. That's how I try and stay organized. So my pros for the class B were I can stand up. Okay. That's the biggest one. I can stand up in it. I have just overall more space. I have the option to hook up for like air conditioning and water if I need to, which I mean, I do most, mostly like, I don't really stay at campgrounds anymore. So that's not, I mean, it's a pro, right? I have the option, but I don't really know how often I do it, if ever. Um, I can have other people inside. Like, so if my mom wanted to come and she wanted to stay with me in Quartzsite for a few nights, like, she could stay with me. And then I could make an indoor potty area for Winston. So, like, those were my pros. My cons were fuel cost, maintenance cost. I would just need more power overall. Right now, I, you know, I don't need a ton of power in my minivan. I have all my power stations. This would require a bigger power build out and more solar. Um, it could be much harder to maneuver. You know, I think about these spaces that I get into and I fit into with my minivan. Um, yeah, you can probably throw a lot of that out the window. Higher insurance, slower travel, much slower travel. You know, in my minivan, I can go the speed limit or a little bit more. And I might not be able to fit in certain drive throughs or parking garages. So those were kind of my, my cons. And then, of course, taking on all that debt. Just the cost in general is kind of crazy when I think about it in terms of increases. So I did my pros and cons of my minivan. And I have way more pros than cons. Like my pros and cons for the Class B were kind of even. But my pros for the minivan are gas mileage, fast travel, super stealthy. I mean, I can stealth camp literally anywhere. Like I've stealth camped in a bank parking lot before. Like I can stealth camp anywhere. Easy to fit anywhere, convenient maintenance, fuel cost, very simple and minimal. Um, super easy to heat and cool. You know, it's a small space, so it takes less time to heat up and cool down. Um, this feels kind of more like a hippie wagon to me. It's more of like a, like that vibe that I really like. So this kind of feels like my cozy cocoon and I, I like that feel. Um, I can fit in any drive through and a parking garage as long as it's seven feet, eight inches. And ultimately I'm, I spend more time outside in my minivan, which my friend Jose said to me, he's like, the point of doing this is being outside. And for me, that's true because I love to be outside. So if I was in a class B, would I force myself to be inside more because I spend the money on it? Would I just be inside more when the point of me doing van life is because I like to be outside adventuring with kiddo, you know, and sitting in the sun? So that's a big factor. Uh, the cons are I can't stand up, of course. I have less overall space. It's more difficult to cook and I can't really have anybody else inside my van with me um, unless they're like, sitting in Winston's seat. So I really went through and I did, I, like I said, I did the math. I did the thinking. I made my list and my ultimate conclusion four months later, after thinking about getting a bigger van and really considering it is I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm just not going to. I love my minivan so much. 
and it's perfect for me. It's everything I need. It's everything I want. And there is absolutely no reason for me to take on additional debt, spend extra money, um, just so I can like stand up and have a little more space. It's just ultimately not worth it. So this spring, I decided that after I'm done with all of my desert travel for the season, like in March, I'm going to get new tires. I'm going to get my fuel injector fixed so my check engine light goes off and I'm going to just do a ton of maintenance because I'm at 85,000 miles now and I take such good care of my van. I really just, I mean, this is like my heart and my soul and I don't want to switch it up. So I decided against getting a bigger van because I'm happy with what I have and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So that was my thought process. I'm glad that I've been thinking about it and I'm glad that I shared it all with you uh, because you may often go through the same kind of, you know, back and forth. What should I do? Yeah, just make lists like I did. It helps a lot. And talk to other people and get other people's opinion. I haven't met one person that's like, Amanda, you should definitely upgrade. Most people are like, Amanda, keep your minivan. It's perfect for you. So that's what I'm going to do. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.